What's going on y'all? This is Alexander with Guns.com and today we're going to take a look at one of my favorite military surplus rifles. This is a Steyr M95 Manlicker. There's a really cool history that starts back long before World War I. So let's check it out. Here we have a straight pull action bolt rifle that's made by Steyr in 1903. This is a model 1895 Manlicker. The design behind the Manlicker 1895 was pretty revolutionary at the time. When we're talking about the turn of the century, moving from the 19th century into the 20th, uh, there was a lot of major kind of developments within the small arms community. You have getting away from black powder, the introduction of smokeless powder, bolt action rifles, the Mauser, stripper clips, we're getting away from falling block, all these different things. And the Austro-Hungarian Empire, which was one of the largest empires at the time, they did not want to be left behind. They wanted a technologically advanced rifle to bring them in to the new century. And that is where Ferdinand Ritter uh, Von Manlicker designed this straight pull rifle. So unlike a lot of the bolt action rifles of the time, there were some technological advances that would give the soldier an extra maybe leg up, some faster follow-up shots with the straight pull system. So unlike most bolt action rifles, I don't have to lift the bolt up, move it to the rear, push it back forward, and then put it down. Uh, the M95 is just straight back and forth. It also has a built-in internal magazine right here with a spring, and it's designed to feed off of in-block clips. So the rounds are completely encased inside of the clip, and the entire clip and all five rounds would go into the system. The advantage to that is, you'll notice on the bottom of the rifle here, there's an opening, and that's so that the rifle can eject the spent clip once you're out of rounds. So. You would take your loaded magazine or your loaded in-block clip, insert it inside of the gun, and then when you were ready to load your last round, you'd slam, you'd slam the bolt forward, that clip would fall to the bottom, and you'd be ready to take your last shot, pull it back, easily take another preloaded uh, clip, throw it inside of the gun. It's really difficult to say clip over and over and over again because I'm so used to saying magazine, but there is a difference between a magazine and a clip, and this is what a clip looks like. There's no spring that's involved with this. It literally just holds the rounds in place. The spring is actually inside of this magazine. So, major speed advantage for your everyday soldier uh, for the United States market or people who are familiar with American firearms, the in-block clip would become fairly iconic in the M1 Garand. You would get the iconic ping, as you can tell on that last round when you slam it forward. There's a little bit of a paying off of this clip as well. Um, the original 1895 model would have looked a little bit different than this. Like I said, this is the turn of the century. There's a lot of things that we don't think about now that they had to think about back then when they were developing rifles. Uh, as smokeless powder would become more advanced, the barrels would get shorter and shorter as the powder burned more efficiently. So the original 1895, as it was adopted, would have had this really long barrel. The other thing to take into account is back in the turn of the century, you still had to think about infantry defending themselves against mounted cavalry. And you would need that long barrel with a long bayonet so that you could reach up and, and kind of protect yourself against any cavalry charge. Charges. Now, this rifle served in that long, full-size capacity through World War I, would lead all the way up through World War II and even having an impact on the modern day. But after World War I, uh, Austria-Hungary did not exist anymore. So a lot of these rifles would go into surplus. Some of them would be basically given to other countries to pay off war debts. Uh, and they would kind of find themselves going into rear, rear echelon service. They would go to warehouses, whatever the case may be. And uh, that's exactly what happened with this rifle. This rifle was built in 1903. Uh, and from what I can tell, served during World War I with the Austro-Hungarian Empire. So here on the barrel, we have an S marking. 
The S marking means that this was involved with the Austrian nation. S is for Spitzer. We would see a change from rounded off kind of Patron style cartridges in World War I going into World War II, everything became Spitzer, and that means pointed. Uh, and when you have a pointed cartridge, it's much more ballistically efficient. You would get more velocity, more range out of it. And so the rifles were designed to accommodate the new, hotter Spitzer ammunition, which became the 8 by 56 r that is a rimmed 8 millimeter cartridge. Um, and this became kind of a secondary round for nations like Austria, Hungary, um, and Germany. The barrel got itself a nice little chop. This becomes a carbine. It still retains some somewhat archaic things. You have this stacking rod right here, which was literally there just so that you could um, put the rifles in like a tripod when you were putting them up in storage or when you're in the field so they're not laying down in the mud. The only other addition to this is the sights would be changed to this ladder style of sight. You would have, I believe, a 250 meter battle zero uh, and the sights would go all the way up to 2200 yards, which is pretty optimistic for the 8x56 rimmed cartridge in this barrel length. Interestingly enough, uh, this is my personal rifle. I bought this at a gun show years and years ago, and it came with a bunch of ammunition. The ammunition is 1938 marked Dirty Bird ammo, as well as some of these in-block clips. So it was probably repurposed for Austria or German use. They would end up in the United States as kind of a collector rifle. Some of them were brought back as war bringbacks. But it's so cool to see a rifle that was designed at the turn of the previous century. It was very technologically advanced, yet still had a lot of these really old, archaic, um, warfare, tactical designs and thoughts that went into it. Uh, but it was made in 1903, which means to this date it's about 121 years old, still fires, uh, still operates the way that it was supposed to, which is just a testament to the manufacturing of these old surplus rifles. You know, getting into surplus collecting and finding these old pieces of history, uh, what gets better than this? It's got the crest of the Austro-Hungarian Empire, which has not existed for over a hundred years. Um, and it's so cool to see something that is long dead and long gone, to be able to hold it in your hands, take it to the range, take some shots with it. And uh, I just think it's the proper way to, I don't know, appreciate history. There are a few things that I love more than digging into the history on a collectible historical rifle like the Steyr M95 Manlicker. We have a whole page dedicated to military classics as well as a collector's corner where you can go and find amazing rifles like the Steyr M95. A lot of these surplus guns are starting to dry up and you don't want to miss out on getting your hands on a piece of history. Thank you so much for taking a little bit of time to learn about this rifle. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe, and we'll catch you guys on the next one.